right now. I think one of those hedge fund managers did share his stack. Mm. And this picture was posted on my Twitter. Lovely. His cat, he had a thousand ounce bar. <laughs> and his cat was guarding it. And that, I, that must be a hedge fund manager's cat because he's wearing some sort of and a bulletproof vest there also or something. <laughs> but uh I think we have evidence that the hedge fund managers are active on Wall Street Silver. Oh, Welcome they... back everyone from the Wall Street Silver community. We have a special friend joining us again, Andrew McGuire. Andrew, how are you doing today, sir? Do you know it is such a pleasure to be with you guys. Uh you you really are uh, very close to my heart uh, this this whole movement and uh, as I say to you, um, I, anything that, that I, we can do uh, to further this movement, and by goodness me, have you ever started to get some traction? Thank you for, for inviting me, and I'm really, really, it's really a pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. We're, it's a pleasure having you here. We also have Jim Lewis and Lee Justo from the Wall Street Silver community. You know, you're an acknowledged expert on what's going on with the, Bas the Basel III changes that are coming. Obviously, Basel III touches directly on gold and changing its status within uh, the reserve system. But how do you think that's going to affect silver prices? Is there going to be an indirect impact there? We need to just kind of understand um, what Basel III is for gold because it is going to impact silver in an enormously bullish way. And um, so really, I mean, bottom line, I think, I mean, some people do and some people don't know, and I don't want to bore people with this, with the detail of it, but essentially under Basel III rules, um, they come into effect on the 28th of June. So this is a pertinent um, time to be talking about it because we're already uh, a big chunk through May. Um, what's going to happen is every single central bank will be able to revalue its physical reserves um, from what is now a 50% haircut into a fully cash exchangeable asset. Now, this is huge because this is going to enable uh, central banks all over the globe to actually uh, pay off massive swathes of debt by revaluing gold. Uh, and not just from a cash asset perspective, but, but really uh, it, it's going to be, you're going to see banks starting to come uh, onto the long side of gold ahead of the revaluation. And people say, oh, come on a minute, you know, the BIS has been hating gold. It's a, it's a gold hater. Why would, why would they allow a price gold re, a, a revaluation? Well, to be quite honest, it is, what it is, is the absolute necessity to protect dollar hegemony because dollar hegemony is under attack. And really, we're going to see global reserves becoming, or gold reserves, coming right onto the forefront. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is, and, and, and I really am trying to edit this down, is that this Basel III for gold is going to be a massive, massive bonus for anyone that's holding physical silver. Can move over to the gold-silver ratio. Back in 1980, it was 20. It moved to uh, 40 around 2011. Uh, how do you see it? moving now with the, the Fed and actually many central banks have just been printing money like crazy. We have to look at how silver is priced it by after this Basel III thing, because I think it is a major, is a major uh, input. Even if the, the gold-silver ratio stayed static in the 60s as it is right now, which it really, clearly can't, we're still looking at a fair value in my view of 100 to $200 an ounce. And I think, I think the reason I, that I have to, what I have to do is say, look, okay, well, where do you get that number from? Because, because if people pull a number out of the air, say, ah, oh, $200, $300, so, okay, where do I get it from? And, and really it's all about the anchor is gold again. And, and we all know that silver and gold are joined at the hip. So uh, what it boils down to is, gold's collateralization of US foreign obligations has only is now only around about um, three or sorry five to six percent and this is one of the objectives that Basel III has to address address and the reason why gold must be revalued so so basically what's going to happen here is normally the ratio is 20 to 40 percent that's the historical average and I think this unallocated positioning when it gets unwound is going to see a restoring of at least the 20 to 40 percent ratio now what does that do 
to the price of gold. It, it pr prices gold between six and $12,000 an ounce. Once this ratio comes back to, uh, to, to, to the historical norm. So then silver, okay, so we're saying 60, I'll just use a number, 60 to one. Uh, and even if we don't adjust any of those, that, 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 leave it at 60 to one, which is implausible. Well, that's 100 to $200 per ounce right there. Uh, and, and so basically, I think once we see the unwind of the unallocated collar though, I see silver's uh, 20, 23 year potential at more like where it should be into towards 16 to one, which would be 375 to 750 bucks an ounce, just based on gold restoring that percentage ratio of gold to foreign debts outstanding. So I, I hope that kind of answers that question. If you guys can see this, this is a chart that shows the how the registered inventory at COMEX is declining and PSLV's inventory is increasing. And mm -hmm. you see the dotted line there, that's where Silver Squeeze started in late January, early February. Do you really, I mean, are you seeing the same sort of thing as Wall Street Silver and Sprott? Are we impacting the market? <laughs> okay, you know, I, I say you bet, because I, I think you have had a massive effect. And, and I think the reason that this, this movement is, and it is a movement, and I, I think this, this is why it's important. It's not just, look, it's just not like the hot trade. This is, what it is, is you have now established what is a, a, a short squeeze that is going to endure, uh, and it's being driven by fully paid up physical silver demand, and it's coming in from thousands of silver bags. Uh, and what, you know, whether it's PSLV, whether it's physical silver. And look, I love watching the videos of these guys, even with a single ounce. Look, this is my ounce. You know, it is a, an aggregation of this movement. And you, as you say, you've got nearly 80,000. I mean, this also segues into more of the Reddit group who will v eventually look and see, hang on a minute, we all tend to gravitate to what's working. And there's a potential, what, 9 million people that could eventually look and say, well, even if you don't love silver, you will see a trade and you'll see something that makes sense. And then you'll learn about silver and you become part of the movement. And I think, you know, I think there's thousands of silverbacks swarming. And, and last, time I spoke, last time I did this, it was only a little while ago, it was only 30 something thousand. And now it's 80,000, close on. Um, look. This is the most definitely the beginning. This is going to affect supply of silver. It's so highly leveraged uh, and industry apologists have really, I mean, if you think about it, they have gone out there and touted 500 to one. That's not my numbers. And, and so looking at the volumes cleared through London every day, it's clear that this level of leverage is actually correct. So each ounce a silverback takes off the market forces 500 to be squared. And so really the key is to keep this onslaught up. Uh, what it does mm -hmm. is progressively drive uh, the wholesale silver market price higher and, and slowly bit by bit, do you know, to be honest, I don't, when I speak, when I see some of your guys, I look at some of the videos, they're not looking at the wholesale price necessarily. They're looking at this silver round, this bar they got. Hey, sometimes they're paying several bucks over spot for this and it's not they're not thinking in wholesale terms like we do what they're doing though is saying i would like some silver and it's like walking into walmart and if something goes on sale and they want to smack it down and give you or put it on sale they'll buy even more mm -hmm. and it's kind of <laughs> changed it's changed the whole dynamic so yeah yes guys i, I totally think you're making a massive impact uh, the, one of the things that i don't think the analyst realizes our people, you know, our stackers, when we take thousands of ounces off the market, that's not coming back on the market anytime soon. And I don't think people like Jeff Christian or Jeff Curry understand that. I, I honestly, I think they do, but I think what, let's, let's, let's just think about what they do. What, what are they, what is, what is their, their industry apologists, both of them industry apologists. Um, where do they make their money? They make their money by selling snake oil. Snake oil being 
like you well, let's let's have all this volatility let's create this we love this comex volatility let's face it the comex was put in place to create volatility 50 years ago after that nixon withdrew the the gold window so so basically what they love it because they can go and sell expensive hedging strategies to the poor miners who wouldn't require them hey if you had a supply demand a, a real supply demand price you wouldn't need a hedging strategy you just you would know everyone would know their business they would know where who what supply was coming to the market what the price was there'd be a natural bid enough natural offer you wouldn't have to hedge it so these guys come out and and they they try and well they try and they, they come after everyone including you guys saying oh waste of time there's so much silver around rubbish there isn't it's not available at this price there is silver yes but it's not for sale and that's the point and so were you taking these ounces off uh these kilos off and you've got guys taking a thousand ounce bars off i mean yes you are impacting these guys and they don't like it because mm -hmm. you're going to create a real ultimately this this evolves into a real supply demand price without this ridiculous paper gaming that enables them to sell these this snake oil to everyone Mm -hmm. Hey, can we talk about that for a second? Um, I, I like to call that market the shadow market, and that's that's COMEX, that's all unallocated silver. Uh, so how long do you see the LBMA and COMEX actually holding any kind of um, sway or influence in the market? Uh, do, do you think that's going to diminish, or do you think they're going to fade away? Well, well I think <laughs> they gave themselves away, I think, uh, last week. Um, and, and you, you saw what they pleaded. They they came out with this long 50 page letter, I think it was, that said, you know, look, please don't allow, don't give us this 85% haircut on the hundreds of tons of unallocated gold cleared every day through the LPMCL. And of course, they mean silver too. Uh, and in, 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 so in their words, what they said is, look, this ris risks collapsing the whole L loco london clearing and settlement process so i mean but this is why it's so important to keep to, to keep i'm hate to keep boring you with the word basil three but the whole point of basil three is to address this uh, a potential 70 trillion of interbank counterparty risk and and really gold is the largest risk component so we see physical market really evolving where central banks will actually benefit from a higher gold price. So silver will benefit. So I really don't see the LBMA having any success here whatsoever. You, you know, um, now that we're talking about LBMA more, there was some recent news that they uh, had a big data error in March and April that was very suspiciously timed right around when SLV claimed that they purchased 120 million ounces uh, just a few weeks earlier than that. Um, it, they want to call it a data error now in, in the release they just made the other day. But what do you think about that? Should there be some sort of investigation as to LBMA's data reporting practices? Because these things affect the market prices. They were put, throwing out these reports from March implying that there's plenty of silver around they just found a hundred and you know 106 million or i forget the exact number 106 million extra ounces they just found in march uh and then now a month or two later uh, uh they're just calling it a data error uh, somehow slipped under the bed. I, I mean, to be honest, I mean, of course, what a farce. I mean, I think this goes back to what we were saying, Jim, just a minute ago, is SLV is exchangeable with COMEX silver futures. So it can be shorted. Uh, and, and so during this period, we actually saw an enormous <laughs> amount of flows coming in and out. This was, this was, this is what actually obfuscated the, the, the whole thing. And I think, you know, obviously, uh, these inflows and outflows cannot be even trusted. Now, and um, so what I would simply, uh, I mean, I would simply, the question is why is SL, this is the bottom line. This is why I'd like an auditor to go in there and why this cannot happen is beyond me. Look, why is the SLV bar list not searchable? Now, 
it, it clearly has to be when you operate within the system, because how could you possibly uh, legitimately uh, inventory and and deallocate um, metal without knowing that you have a, a correct bar list. So it must be searchable. But if I want to search it as a wholesaler, even and and we have we we taken uh, we've taken deliveries of you know a ton uh, and six hundred tons uh, six hundred um, of the bars came from J P Morgan. So we thought, ah, let's out of interest. Let's search the bar list and see if there's any duplicates here. Well, seven, I think 7,000 pages with, and it's not searchable. How ludicrous is that? So this is a farce. And, and really, this is where in order, this is what we should, we should be demanding as a group that, okay, if it's there, let us have that list. Let us find the searchable bar list, not 7,800 pages of, of numbers that nobody in their right mind could possibly search them, which is, Essentially, each time you take an ounce, you're actually d diluting the, the what little physical actually uh, holds up this inverted pyramid, teetering pyramid of of absolute rubbish supply. Uh, and we all know, we you know, look how many times have you sat through a day, and you see, I mean, you look at the charts, and you see, hang on, what? Why is it just dumped? You know, for what reason? All the crosses, all the crosses are bullish. Why is it just suddenly dumb? Oh, because it was, it hit a certain uh, moving average and it, you know, and you know, what it, the reason it dumped is because they've looked at the, uh, they, 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 they hold you, if you're a margin trader, they hold you on your book and they look and see where the pain points are. And they can do that through the option structure. They've got sophisticated programs. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna come in and rinse the margin out of people who've been stupid enough to borrow money off the off the casino, and then obviously you know ninety five percent of people who play in the casino are going to lose money. Five percent may win, but but you'll lose most of the time. So guys, you're doing the right thing, and I, all I would say is just keep doing what you're doing. To be honest, what you're doing, uh, and really, you, you, what you're doing is 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 really attacking this. And together, what I'm saying is together, all of us. We can set the ranges. We this is how we corner this silver market. Well, you know, it's I, I, I maybe we shouldn't use the word corner. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, or I don't want I want I don't want YouTube to take us down. But uh, oh yeah, uh, yes, we're going that's to be a, that's a, there, there are certain words. I don't I don't even know if that's a, that's one of those words, but maybe it, I don't know. The interesting thing about this, you know, cornering the market or whatever. I don't really think that's anyone's goal. I mean, how can 50,000 people talking openly on a, on a forum, we're, we're just talking about, we just like this, we just like silver. We just think it's an undervalued metal and we think it's a good way to protect ourselves from inflation, preserve your assets in the face of the craziness of the central banks and government policies, not just in the United States, but around the world. They're all doing it. They're all printing like there's no tomorrow. I know Eric Sprott, he is absolutely the integrity of the man. Uh, I've, I've had many meetings, you know, I've, I've had dinner with him. He's a very nice man and a very trustworthy man. Uh, look, look, basically anything he does is legit. And and so I, I would definitely say absolutely. But it it's also all of the other physical elements that go on. Now, look, obviously, <laughs> look, I'm a director of Kinesis and obviously we mm. just think about last month, we actually traded close to 4 billion. We haven't even got going yet. This is a global movement, every mm. single ounce. Now, some of that's gold and some of it's silver. More and more and more of it will be silver. So again, whether whatever it is, as long as it's physical, then obviously there we're doing, we're doing, what we're doing is, 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 is attacking the legacy systems which is just all air. And, and I think, yes, one day we're going to wake up and the price is going to be so much higher. And I think that's why I wanted to bring in Basel III with gold because mm -hmm. silver has joined at the hip. Suddenly you're going to see a much higher gold price. You're going to see every central bank, every single central bank is going to require a higher gold price. There's so much debt floating around the systems. And so it, and also you have to eliminate a 2008 crisis on uh, uh, that's Lehman on steroids about to happen. And so really 
Yes. And every, you, you, everyone you've just talked about is basically what they're doing is taking their fiat, their, their rapidly depreciating fiat and exchanging it, swapping it for something physical of real value. And as you say, it's so cheap. It's you, people are going to look back at this and kick themselves. People who think, oh, yeah, well, Bitcoin, well, if only if only I'd bought it at a few cents. Hey, this is your moment, guys. Yeah. 25, 27 bucks. I mean, come on. I mean, we this is so undervalued. You're going to kick yourself for not mm -hmm. stacking that silver right now. You know, I got involved in this market because I, you know, I started following it in the late 1990s. Uh, it seemed like a very good fundamental case for it then. It seems like it's only grown stronger and stronger over that time. Uh, I kind of learned more about like the price manipulation theory through getting involved in Wall Street Silver. And, and I'm just curious about, you know, the regulatory bodies, the CFTC, you know, the uh, FBI, whoever, the Justice Department and other countries uh, regulatory. I mean, are, are these folks complicit in all this? To be honest, I mean, I wasn't even planning this, but this this actually leads into my journey into Kinesis because basically I was in, I was actually in, uh, obviously everyone knows I'm a whistleblower. Um, I'm, I mean, if you want to just catch up with what I've done, I'm not trying to blow my horn here, but if you go on The Secret World of Gold, which is on the History Channel, and you go through, it's a really good documentary in any way about gold, silver, and we go through the, 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 the multi-billion dollar pr price smash on the 1st of May 2011, and we kind of indicate how it all works and one thing and another. But so, so basically in that, we, we, that attests to the fact that, you know, I'm named as the whistleblower, they were looking at evidence. And, and, and let me just explain what happened there. You, brought the DO, you just brought up the, the DOJ. And yes, the CFTC was doing nothing. So my lawyers and I went to, uh, got invited by the DOJ after making a complaint about, to, to, about the CFTC not acting on clear evidence where we provided them 88 time-stamped examples uh, uh, of where the price of gold and silver would be the following 24 hours. I mean, to the tick, wow. every wow. single time without exception. And so we go with them to this and we do a presentation on the wall and there it is on a big screen. And I, they, they, they go, oh my God, well, th this, this, this clearly must go up the chain. Yeah, it actually goes up the chain as far as, at least to as far as that NOAC guy who sat on the fix who actually was the responsible for hitting the exact numbers that we said would be hit the next day. Wow. So why that waited 10 years? I mean, this was 2011. Why that waited 10 years for them to be, for him to be even charged? Why that resulted in a slap on the wrist fine to, uh, to JP Morgan, which is about a day's worth of doing business, just as we left after that, we thought, right, this has to lead all the way up. I mean, come on, this is board level stuff. This has to nail the top guys. And what did the DOJ say to me on the way out? They said, yeah, but Andrew, what about the economic consequences of this? So, well, what did that do? I mean, that tells us right away, forget it. Nothing's gonna happen. Yes, it means clearly they cannot afford to pull the plug on a too big to fail bank cause a banking crisis that would probably so whether they're you know whether they want to be behind it or not they certainly have been uh, not wanting to do anything about it so and then i walk out of there and, and look i don't believe in coincidences and, and what i'm saying to myself guys we've got to take responsibility for ourselves but how do we even do this how do we actually do this because no one they're obviously not going to do anything and i i walk into that same month thinking, I'm thinking, I'm just going to get out of the business or whatever. I meet Tom Coughlin and he's just talking about setting up an, uh, an electronic physical institutional exchange to compete with the COMEX. And we go, I can't believe this. So we, him, a team, our team, we, we build, we, 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 we go on this journey. It's 11 years ago and it's, it's tr been trading beautifully. So ever since, and it's created, what it did though was create the ability to aggregate a physical price. Now, if you've got a, a if you've got a digitized gold or silver price, you cannot say you cannot trade in the billions unless you actually have a real aggregated price, not the paper price. You can't go to London and say, 
I, I, I want to take uh, X, X amount of, of uh, silver, X amount of gold at the spot price, you're not going to get it. It's bilaterally settled. So the liquidity providers in our vaults around the world, 12, 12 vaults and liquidity providers, will get us a price where somebody's actually willing to sell you that bullion for. That aggregates a physical price. Then you can digitize it. And that's kind of where Kinesis started. So without the allocated bullion exchange, it could never have come into being. And now, as I say, last month, we were to nearly 4 billion in trades. And we haven't even, we haven't even involved the, the first government organ, uh, government participation that we've uh, we've now evolved into with the, with the Indonesian government. So, and there are others. This is a big journey. So I think, you know, to me, we have to take, my message is take responsibility for ourselves. You guys are doing it. We're doing it. We're trying to do it on an institutional level, on a global level. You're doing it actually on a such a granular level, which is that's what is going to break this mark. Andrew, um, one of the questions that our members always ask about Kinesis when it comes up on various topics is uh, the audits. What is the audit process of Kinesis and how, uh, you know, people want to have confidence that, that the silver and the gold is really there, just like at Sprott. People have a lot of confidence in Sprott. How can they have the same confidence in Kinesis? Okay, because, uh, uh, because we have um, over 10 years of, uh, obviously, uh, Kinesis um, obviously utilizes the allocated bullion exchange infrastructure. And that has uh, 10 years of absolute history, where all along the way, uh, we have audits, independent audits done on a regular basis. And in fact, I would invite people to get on the website because you know, have a look and look at our last audit. Audit. They come up every six months, and basically, what we're doing, what happens is, they go around all our different globes, and this is it completely independently done. They total up the bullion bar numbers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to the ounce. And look, the point is, is that the whole structure of uh, of Kinesis and ABX is that none of the bullion in us in the system. It belongs to uh, is is titled to Kinesis or ABX. It it is titled. We're acting as baileys for the bullion, which is owned by the individual person who's purchasing it. Yeah, and 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 I think this is this is a finally a global willingness to readopt gold and silver as really everyday money. And I'm a director of D Kinesis. I'm part of the team, and obviously I, I, I'm I welcome every single currency out there, but. But, but what we're doing here is, and, and again, this is all about taking responsibility. It, Kinesis marries the latest in payment technology, which is obviously the, against the oldest and greatest store of value. Uh, and, and it should make money what it is, what it should be. And, and so digitizing gold and silver, it, it provides the key because then you can use that as uh, you, you can use it in small amounts to use as an everyday currency. And so obviously it has to be small enough units. But as I just said before, really, how do you how do you even price a small amount of gold and silver that is when you're buying your Starbucks coffee? This goes all the way back into the whole global vaulting system through ABX where it's a real price. That is really, you are really buying and selling uh, uh, or using that currency for the price of the bid and the ask price for everything that you transact. So I think it, it has to be that. And, and there are about 60 other coins out there. And look, I welcome, I welcome the fact that there are people out there who are drawing attention to gold. Uh, in fact, no, I think, think, I don't know anyone else is doing silver, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't, can't think of a single um, other uh, currency out there or, or digitized uh, coin out there that does silver but we always wanted to do silver because silver is to us the achilles heel of the system and again this is all part of the bigger plan to actually come in and set the the set the, the price of silver knowing that if we can set the price of silver, physical price of silver then actually gold is sorted as well and, and really it is, it is the same actors, we know it's the same actors in both uh, markets who are playing the games. 
Um, Andrew, several of our members have taken delivery of silver from Kinesis. One of, one of the more memorable ones was Jim Forsyth, and he documented the whole process there on, on the Reddit community, Wall Street Silver. And he showed us the two bars that were actually delivered. They were two 100-ounce uh, Engelhard bars. He showed the pictures of it, showed the box that came in, showed us the whole process. And he was able to get the bars. He, he, he did all the math, and it came out where he was able to acquire 200 ounces for about $2 over spot. Um, so could you sort of explain to us the process of taking physical delivery through Kinesis? Jim did an, an, an excellent job. I mean, really, uh, I mean, he, he is a mathematician. Uh, he's uh, an integral person. Uh, he has a great provenance. He has no, uh, he has, he, he had no reason to, uh, to do anything other than uh, to take a really hard look at and test the system out. And he tested the system. And the system really is where, and, and obviously, he, what he's done is publish and through you and it's available uh it's available there and i think we even have it on the um uh on the on the kinesis site but basically it goes through the entire process of how you can literally get on your 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 your, your, your smartphone you can look at bid and the ask nice tight spread you, you buy it and then you say you know what i think i'll actually take physical delivery of that now that is well, that proves that it's allocated. It proves that if you want to take it, you can. Now, a lot of people um, want to actually use it as a currency because there's a yield. Obviously, there's a, a fee sharing yield system as well, and there's no storage fees. So um, I personally use it for spend. I spend it everything. I, I, all my bills are, are, sp are, are spent on using my gold and silver currencies. And all my income comes in through them. And I think... But I can take delivery anytime I want. And, and so he, he, that's all he chose to do. He thought, well, let's see, let's see if it's really there. And sure enough, he got it. And as you say, it was probably a couple of bucks over. I think uh, premiums were probably, that was cheap. I think he said it was cheaper than any, anywhere else he could have got it. Yeah, yeah I've got a lot, of people, a lot of people take delivery and, and, and it's, it's, it's really great. I mean, if you, you can have it delivered to your home um, and, and that included, I mean, I think he included the cost of delivery yeah, he in, did. Um, in all of that process. So, you know, obviously we're not there to make money out of delivery. Um, we're, we're in the gold and silver business. So, yeah. but basically, yes. And no, I think uh, go on the website, have a look. In fact, look at his thread. It is so detailed. It's um, in fact, it, it's, it, it really is a boilerplate on the whole process. Yeah. I'm here anytime you want. If I can contribute anything yeah. at all, uh, then I'm I'm really want to do it. Hey, but I want to hey I want to remind everyone. Look, what about the, the you know the Kinesis thousand ounce silver giveaway? Hey, it's still very much alive. And and people who don't know, you simply need to click claim your first ounce tab. I mean that's all you have to do on the way at Wall Street Silver's page. And you just it's a free account. Sign up Kinesis through that link and verify your account. Hey, how hard is that? That's not yeah. costing you anything. <laughs> so it's, yeah, well, it's, it's physical silver. Andrew, I, I'd like just like to say before you go, um, after Basil 3 rolls out, we, we sure would love to have you back on and talk about Basil 4. Oh, yeah, let, let's, 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 scary. Basil 4, <laughs> scary. Oh, my Lord. Uh, I think Basil 3 is going to be good for gold. Basil 4 is going to be, yeah let's go through it like next time because it, it is going to be actually scary for the entire banking system well, yeah. well when is the deadline for basel three when does that happen and uh, well okay Basically. june 28th for as far as gold's concerned and and of course reflecting silver that then the 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 nsfr rules uh this these new ratios have to come okay. in on june 28th um, All right, maybe maybe that would be a good week to have you in uh and, and we'll talk again yeah. and uh Maybe there'll be some. Maybe 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 they'll all be panicking and uh, that week, and uh, there'll be a lot to talk about. Lots to talk about, and you know what? This is all part of our journey. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for everything you do. You are heroes in my view. You've created something. Uh, it's become look nearly eighty thousand members. I mean that's mind blowing. The last time I was on, as I say, it was thirty four. I think it was thirty four thousand. I mean, my goodness me. Next time, where are we going to be? I mean, this is, oh, well, I, well, as I say, every hedge fund manager I know, everyone 
is on your channel every day, hitting mm -hmm. to see in there to see what's going on and getting a real flavor of what's going on. That's never been there before. It's a resource that we should all use. Well, tell some of those hedge fund, hedge fund managers to start stacking. I mean, they need, <laughs> they need to start to... <laughs> and how do you know they're not? Yeah, yeah I hope so. Tell them to start posting their stacks. I'd love to see some hedge fund manager stacks. Uh, that could be impressive. Yeah, well, just think of think of think of the think of the daily the eighty five foot high uh, pallets of silver cleared every day in London of phantom silver. No wonder they can't. They they lost a oh. hundred. They're 100,000 ounces. They're wonder. You know something? I posted a picture this morning, and I'm going to share it right now. I think one of those hedge fund managers did share his stack. Mm. And this picture was posted on my Twitter. Lovely. His cat, he had a 1,000-ounce bar, <laughs> and his cat was guarding it. And that, I, that must be a hedge fund manager's cat because he's wearing some sort of and a bulletproof vest there also or something. <laughs> but uh, I think we have evidence that the hedge fund managers are active on Wall Street Silver. Oh, uh, they are indeed. Uh, believe me, I know they are. I know I know one out of Hong Kong that comes in every day, and I know two others, one out yeah. of Texas and someone else, yeah. Well, Andrew, thank you very much for, for, the, for the chat, and we'll look forward to talking to you in June. You betcha. Look forward to it. Have a great day, my friend. Take care, everyone.